this week on Outdoor Bound TV. We're back in the mountains of New Zealand with Aaron Fredland of British Columbia, Canada. Now, Aaron has traveled to the South Island to hunt chamois with his good friend, Alan Stewart of Lethen Valley Trophy Hunts. And later, we stop by the Wisconsin Canoe Heritage Museum in Spooner, Wisconsin to preview the 2012 museum exhibit. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, Sign and Printing Solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. Hey, do you want to stay up to date on the cast and crew of Outdoor Bound TV? Find them on Facebook or you can log on to their website, outdoorbound.tv. I'm Kevin Brandner from Pepin, Wisconsin, and Outdoor Bound TV will be right back after these messages. At Colby Chrysler Center, we know that buying a new car is a big deal, so we do our best to make it feel right at home. We know your time is important, so you won't find any gimmicks or hassles here. Just a great selection and unbeatable prices. Good looks, a comfortable ride, a Hemi engine, safety, and the ability to haul just about anything. What more could you ask for in a new truck? Our commitment to you doesn't end with a sale. We are here for you anytime you need us. At Colby Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. On last week's show, we left my good friend, Aaron Fredlin, high in the mountains of New Zealand, where he had just harvested an awesome Himalayan tar. Now on this week's show, he and his guide, Alan, decide to go further up the peak in search of one of the hardest animals in the world to harvest, the alpine chamois. Now, what was funny about this hunt is Alan and Aaron had to film it themselves because they could not manage to talk any of our camera crew into following them onto this rugged peak. So you can see this is the valley we started in, just around that ridge. Shania's Twain's place over there. Doesn't mean much when you're chamois hunting. Anyway, she owns that mountain apparently. That's her pad there. I guess there's two chamois right here. Alan just called me. We just got to where we want to be. So we'll sneak over there and see what we got going on. Awesome country. What 
what you got? Two in the original. Really? Oh, yeah. See the two sweet Now the chamois, or chamois as it is commonly referred to, is native to the mountains of Europe. This small goat-like animal was introduced in the mountains of New Zealand in 1907, and today the populations are flourishing. Hunters from all over the world descend upon New Zealand each year in search of this elusive trophy. Now you may have heard of chamois leather, the very smooth and absorbent material made from the hide of chamois and favored for cleaning and polishing as it produces no streaks when wet. What makes this animal so sought after from sportsmen from around the globe is not necessarily the size of the trophy, it usually weighs less than 90 pounds, but rather the steep climb you must endure to harvest one. Yeah, we come from down there, and we come up here, and we're gonna work our way along here is what you're figuring. Where do you see most of your chamois? I don't like seeing them on that ridge line. But they screwed up. Them. Them yeah, that's right. <laughs> Look at this country. Unbelievable. We saw one on that point over there. I think we're going to head there next. <laughs> Just waiting for Toby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Holy lightning, this is awesome. This country, unbelievable. Huh. Well, we're gonna scope out these couple chamois and see what we got going on. Out there about 475 or 480. It's a good poke across this canyon. I'm just kind of waiting. I lost them there. Just kind of waiting to see if they'll go over. Let's go. You can see how steep it is. Whoa. By Alan's posture there, he's walking straight up and down. Or walking along the bank. I got some rugged stuff yet to hit, but we should be able to get across it. There's our next obstacle. Bail into it. Which one, the big one? Big body. Yeah. What do you think he is? I think he's worth shooting. Tell me when you, are you 
comfortable. Yeah. Just a minute, I'll put it on. When you're ready. Wait till they come on, they're at ridge. Hey. That's the big black one there, isn't it? Just see if they come up a wee bit. Yeah, I think so. It's good. Get ready for another shot though. I think he's hit hard. Yeah, I know. That would be... Can you see what he's doing? He's done good work. No, he's, he's good, just leave, let the other one settle, we might have to get him. Just keep your eye on him though. Should have had 200 here. Look at that. Both of them are good body shots, I know that. Yeah. Shooting through a little bit of grass, but I don't think it's too bad. No. Chamois are not that tough, but they can stand too like that. I think we can go down safely and yeah. see what's going on. No, Aaron just doesn't know how lucky he was. These animals are not easy to come by. First time we've hunted in here for two years. Cool place. Once you see around the corner, see how ragged it is. They don't even know we're here yet, even though we did shoot twice. Take it easy, mate. <laughs> Time on to your trousers. Hey, you look pretty good. Is he go <laughs> ooh, ooh. Thick horns. Yeah, no, turn him sideways. 
Man, that's awesome. Thick. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good nine inches by the look of it. Cool. Hey. <laughs> it wasn't too hard. <laughs> he's a lucky hunter. <laughs> Happy hunter. <laughs> Happy hunter. No luck in that, all skill. Well, we did it. Yeah, we did it. He's a cool chamois. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now I can see, I can shift around. Thick horns. Yeah. And a long time before you get thicker horns than that. Not real long, probably eight and a half to nine. I say eight and three quarters. Yeah. Beautiful, just getting ready for the rut. You see them rubbing the horns and leaving the scent down there. Shot straight downhill at about 260. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but um, <laughs> had another nice buck with him. I think his horns were just as long actually. Yeah. Maybe not as thick, but um, he just didn't quite have the winter coat on yeah. of this one. And um, picked this one, it was a bigger target. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of hair on him, <laughs> yeah. as you can see. Now he ran up behind us, up back behind us. Yeah, did you see him knock this one over the yeah. over the cliff? No, couldn't be happier. Hey, let's take a couple of pictures and get out of here before it starts raining. Yeah, <laughs> sure might do that. Okay. Thanks again, Alan. <laughs> Cheers. Let's make her home before dark, eh, mate? Before dark and before the rain. For sure. We did bring our raincoats, didn't we? Well, you did anyway. <laughs> It's always nice when a hunter can carry his own trophy. Son of a real hunter. Now the weather was taking a turn for the worse. The wind was starting to blow and it was starting to mist. Our hunters had to get their trophy off the mountain before darkness falls. Now our duo still had one mountain to climb, another valley to cross, and one more mountain before they'd make it back to the truck. Guys, I guess it was pretty obvious why the camera crew wouldn't follow you on this little trek. Just making it back before dark. I can certainly see why so few hunters every year are actually able to harvest an alpine chamois. Congratulations, Aaron. I'm sure this is a hunt you will not soon forget. Visual acuity, enhanced vision, improved shooting, competitive edge, 100% guarantee. Bow tint archery lenses, created by optometrist Dr. Perry Arndt, helping redefine hunting and competitive archery by utilizing tinted optical lens technology to enhance clarity and focus. Dr. Arndt, an avid sportsman, uses tinted lenses in his eyewear to enhance his competitive edge while trap shooting. 
Bowtent scope lenses are specifically designed to increase focus and clarity. Hi, my name is Perry Arndt and I'm the founder of Bowtent Lenses. I'm an eye doctor, an optometrist that has been practicing in Wisconsin for 38 years. And I really love my job. But there can be times that my job uh, can be a disadvantage. And actually it's times when, for instance, I'm playing a sport like baseball, or maybe shooting a bow, or playing golf, and I hit a ball out into the woods somewhere. It's very common that people say to me, have you had your eyes checked lately? Well, one of my friends that I was actually shooting with, his name is Tony, and he asked me one day if it was possible to develop a lens that would work in the scopes of bows to improve the ability to see and sight for bow hunters. Well, with my background in optics and tints and anti-glare, I took that challenge and worked on developing a lens that had magnification, certain tints, tints that would, for instance, highlight a target and diminish the background, have an anti-glare and even a corrective curved surface for better optics and less distortion. Bow tint lenses allow archers to improve arrow accuracy, whether hunting or in competition. Bow tint archery lenses. Improve your competitive edge and order today. Next, we meet Jed Malischke at the Wisconsin Canoe Heritage Museum, where he takes us on a behind-the-scenes tour of the 2012 exhibit, opening to the public on Memorial Day weekend. Well, I'm Jed Malischke, and we're here at the Wisconsin Canoe Heritage Museum in Spooner, Wisconsin. And I'm involved with the board of directors for the museum. It's been here about three years now. This will be our third summer. We're open in Spooner, Wisconsin. We have a nice collection of boats that kind of got the museum started. We received a collection of canoes, uh, some very good historic uh, and antique canoes from Jill and Jeff Dean from Madison. They had a collection that they were looking for a home for, some place that would keep the whole collection together. So uh, we got a group of volunteers uh, together and uh, the city had a building it had recently purchased, uh, the building you're seeing that we're sitting in. It used to be a, a grain elevator, part of the railroad infrastructure uh, of the Spooner community. Uh, just across the parking lot is the Railroad Memories Museum and the old depot and the railroad tracks back here. So we're kind of in the museum district of Spooner now. Some of the canoes behind me are some of the turn of the century canoes that we have back here that re represent some of the different manufacturers of old canvas canoes uh, back when canoeing was a big social activity uh, before the car you know where a young man and woman could go one of the few places they could go alone without a chaperone was go for that canoe ride and maybe see some of that in the photographs behind me there we kind of try to tell a historic uh, a story. We start with some of the uh, some birch bark replicas, which of course were the earliest form and design of, of canoes in North America. And we move on to what I just mentioned, some of the turns of the century canvas canoes, which kind of represent the next stage after the birch bark canoes. We have a Canadian section where we feature some of the different styles of Canadian builders. Well, there's uh, one that was designed specifically for fly fishing on the Brule River which is very close by here. And we have, typically we have an annual display that we change out every year. A couple of years ago we just, uh, were featuring canoes of Wisconsin, made in Wisconsin. Uh, last year we featured a display of Sigurd Olson material, some of his original equipment and, and canoes. And, and this year we're going to be focusing on Rushton canoes. We have a pretty well uh, outfitted it with equipment now and, and tools and several uh, boats have been constructed there by uh, members that are coming in on their own and, and constructing a sometimes a wood strip canoe. We've had several canvas covered canoes. Um, we have a number of people who are involved in helping us restore some canoes. So since opening we've actually had a lot of people contact us and say gee we've got this Old canoe, it was my father's or my grandfather's. It's been in the you know attic or the garage or whatever. We don't know anything about it. So we, we build a raffle canoe in there every winter. Uh, we're working on a program now so people that are less familiar with the construction themselves can be paired up with a, a mentor 
so they can work on their own canoes. And then we're, we're planning and we've had some uh, smaller class things. Last year we had a, uh, last during the winter we had a paddle making class, if, you know, a few over a period of about three weeks you come in for a night and you go away with your own handmade paddle. We had a, uh, a seat caning class and a snowshoe uh, making class uh, that another organization used their building to put on. And uh, one of the more interesting activities last November, we had a symphony, uh, symphony orchestra in the shop. If you'd like to learn more about the Wisconsin Canoe Heritage Museum, check out their website or visit their location in downtown Spooner. Folks, join us again here next week and we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around Wisconsin, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. At Colby Chrysler Center, we know that buying a new car is a big deal, so we do our best to make it feel right at home. We know your time is important, so you won't find any gimmicks or hassles here. Just a great selection and unbeatable prices. Good looks, a comfortable ride, a Hemi engine, safety, and the ability to haul just about anything. What more could you ask for in a new truck? Our commitment to you doesn't end with a sale. We are here for you anytime you need us. At Colby Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions.